I have, I have a different philosophy than everybody when it's always came to that side of the business. Mm-hmm. It's like, good for whatever. Like, upload it on your shit. I don't care. Like, just whatever. Like, as long as the music's spreading, the more the music's spreading. I'm the one guy that if, like, they took my song and put it on a big movie and everybody else would be like, what, they should have paid you for that. I'd be like, you're tripping. That is awesome. I'd be, <laughs> nothing would be happier than if I'd have been just like super stoned watching fucking the new uh, Tom Cruise movie. And then he's in the plane and Jelly Roll starts playing. I'd have been like, let's <laughs> fucking go. The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by 291 Colorado Whiskey, by Michter's, and by Heaven Hill Brands. You know, I'm glad to see you on the front side of my day. Yeah. (laughs) Last time we did one of these, I was drunk, and I had already played. And I learned from that. And today, they were like, when do you want to do media? I was like, before the show. For sure, before the show. So, you have, you've had a number one song since I last saw you. You've been you've been selling at venues. Uh, you've done um, the football stadium, and you've been doing so much awesome stuff, man. Oh yeah, it's been so beautiful. It's been unreal, man. I've had I've just had one of those years you pray about your whole life, and then it starts happening. You're like, how did this happen? I think hard work has something to do with it. Oh, dude, thank you. Yes, one thing for sure is I I, I don't look at it as work. But then when I realize that it is what I do for a living, I guess, I'm like, yeah, I work harder than fucking everybody I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you just don't think about it because, like, fuck, I'm not really working. I'm just, you know, there's parts of this gig that are like, ah, that sucks, but not very many. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. it's a really, really cool thing. And also, man, you got to, you know, your wife, you have a special connection with your wife. She's so supportive. You you know, you're always out there talking about her. I, I love that, man. I just don't think, like... I could have found a better match for me. Yeah. For like my own, but they say there's somebody for everybody. I didn't necessarily believe that. I thought people just kind of found each other and just fucked each other's lives up. Yeah. But it's, uh, there is really some, I mean, at least, you know, there was definitely a, a piece for the other side of this puzzle. Yeah. So what has been, so as this, uh, blossoming, blooming, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, what is, has anything changed for you? No, the only thing that's changed is schedule. Yeah. Like, I've always, like, worked, Mm -hmm. but I, like, never had a schedule. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, it was kind of like, you kind of just, you know, you had to be at shows, but it's like having a calendar now that every day from, like, whenever you wake up to go to sleep is almost always full. Like, you got to kind of call people now and be like, yo, can I get an afternoon where there ain't nothing on this fucking thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, just, like, a few hours or something. But yeah, it's awesome. That's the only thing that's changed. But what's changed is having to tell your friend, hey man, you free November 10th? We could grab dinner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but it's awesome. Fuck, great problems to have. So I remember the one of the, a couple of them that have stood out to me, like your great accomplishments. Uh, probably one of the, one of the big first ones was your uh, YouTube accomplishment? You hit, oh. I think, I think you hit like a million subscribers. Yes, sir. And 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 you posted on social media right after that of like, oh my god, I never thought I would I would feel this. One million people, dude. That was YouTube is the hardest place to get a subscriber. So yeah, it is, and still is. I mean, YouTube's uh, YouTube's um, a real community, and if they get behind you, they're behind you, and if they're not, they're not. No, they will say, fuck you. Yeah, for sure. Like and I have been blessed that YouTube has been rocking. But I've also been blessed that I got to YouTube early. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm i like one of the best things that ever happened to me was my always being intrigued with technology, even though I'm mm-hmm. horrible with it. It was like, I just loved that there was always something new. So when somebody's like, yo, you got to see this thing. People just upload videos like America's Funniest Home Videos, but they do it to this thing called YouTube.com on the computer. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, that's dope. What a concept. Went straight on and seen it. was like, we must do this. Oh, man. It, it's so true, though. It's so true. Like, YouTube has it's evolved into the number one platform for so many things. My children won't watch anything but YouTube half the time. Yep. So it, it's fascinating. Well, even then, the cheat code now for cable is YouTube TV. That's right. It's like Hulu. 
Yeah. Well, he's got every station. YouTube partner with everybody, I feel like. Yeah, now they're uh now the net network executives are catching on and negotiating. I just had to pay seven bucks to keep watching AMC the other day, so yeah, uh, well, they're, they're catching up to it. I know that it's going to keep happening because every time I turn around, I'm getting suckered into buying some new streaming player service. Yeah, so I can watch a movie that everybody's talking about. Well, hey, you know something else though? You're as a musician, your stuff gets taken all the time and used and stuff that you don't give permission to, like yeah. like TikTok, uh, all these different services out there. And I know you got a team, you know, that tracks that, and the and the labels have like special codes and the in the on the software uh to to ping it but you know do you, have you been now that you've kind of had you've you've had a number one hit have you seen some of your stuff get copyrighted or well, not counterfeited a little bit sometimes but you know I, I have a different philosophy than everybody when it's always came to that side of the business mm-hmm. it's like good for whatever like upload it on your shit i don't care like just whatever like as long as the music's spreading, the more the music's spreading. I'm the one guy that if like they took my song and put it on a big movie and everybody else would be like, what, they should have paid you for that. I'd be like, you're tripping. That is awesome. I'd be, <laughs> nothing would be happier than if I'd have been just like super stoned watching fucking the new um, Tom Cruise movie. And then he's in the plane and Jelly Roll starts playing. I'd have been like, let's <laughs> fucking go. I that love that. awesome. I would be up clapping and cheering for myself and telling everybody, go see the new Tom Cruise movie. I'm in it. You know, like, I don't know. That's just how I look at it, where some weird fucker would be like, I should have been compensated for my composition. (laughs) Fuck you, man. You know how many people just watch Tom Cruise on a plane listening to Dead Man Walking? This is great. (laughs) I love that. I love that attitude. That means that you're saying no to the army of lawyers, which I respect that, man. Well, dude, it's like, you. I will not, I don't like that Cheers. I don't like that commerce gets in the way of art so much and yeah. it keeps so many more people from being exposed to the music that might need to be exposed to the music. Right. I don't get, it's like, I don't, I just want more people to hear the music. That's my thing. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, I don't want nothing to get in the way of that. Not money. That's why we do festivals and some, you know, I, I Listen, I won't get into that, but, but you know, we take, I, I personally mm-hmm. take a haircut at every festival I play. No problem. I just want to get the music to the people. You know, I don't care what time I play, how much you pay me, put me fucking in front of people. That's what I want. Oh, I love that, man. And, and you know, you've, you, you can now officially play, you can play a rock concert. You can play a hip hop show. You can play country. That one hit you hard. Yeah, I really took it. So, like I said, I just woke up. So this is this, this right here might give me a little early morning toast, but it got me enough to want licks at the bottle one time. That's said Jack Daniels triple mash, new thing they got out. Let's let's go ahead and move to something else. Oh Jesus, hold on now, Fred. You, I can't. You don't have to in here getting drunk. You, you don't have to drink the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> well, you don't. You don't have to drink the whole thing. All right. But you remember last time we went through that whole flavor thing? Oh yeah, we got a flavor profile uh, test. Bacon. I got a light coconut. Never knew it. Uh, but I did, <laughs> I did bring something special from the from the backwoods of of North Carolina, Ooh. that it felt like it might be right for you. It, now, if you want to go with something that's in a legit bottle and what have you, we can do that. This is a, a jar of moonshine. Oh yeah, more my style. I, I brought directly just for you. Yeah, this is it. I mean, you probably tell I prefer things that aren't in legal bottles. And I cannot divulge who uh, this came from. Ooh, that's one that's really good. Tell you what, they tighten it for you. If I can fucking know. open the damn thing. Yeah. Your manager looked like a strong man. He is. He's quite a... He's quite a he, quite here here to left. Hold on. Yeah. Give me a second. I, I, I can do this. We're all adults here. There we Oh, you got it. I was getting nervous. I was like, fuck, man. If I have to do it and I blow it, we're both going to look bad. All right. So this is. How, do you pour the same amount? He's a professional pour, y'all. And he does it so fast and so effortless. Ooh, baby. This is straight from the hills boom, 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 of boom, Carolina. Boom, boom. Some moonshine. Right here. No label. Yeah. Shake that up there. What do we know? What's in it? Uh, it's mighty is, dark not to smell sweet. This is uh, <laughs> this is uh, meant to be like a like a bourbon. Oh wow! 
but it does not smell like it. Is this the unofficial backwood Fred Minnick moonshine? Uh, are, you, are you suggesting that I made it? No, I'm just saying, like, I would never suggest that. Number <laughs> one, we are friends. I am suggesting that somebody admired you and made a Minnick moonshine. Um. <laughs> well, we'll see how An much they... An anonymous admirer. We'll see how much they uh, admired me. Okay. After we take, you, now, here's the real thing about moonshines. Let's just smell it. Okay, it doesn't smell like turpentine or death. Yes. So that that's good, yep, right? It does not smell like prison toilet water. Yeah. So let's just put a little bit on our tongue. Just a little bit. I can't believe this is how my day started. <laughs> okay, I don't think that was... Uh, Meant to be like bourbon, tastes really sweet. It's sweeter, not sweeter, and it smelt. Yeah, we, uh, we added something to that. Maybe, hopefully, acid. Wouldn't that be awesome? If they like added acid, some to acid it? in there, and our interview just got wild, and I didn't do my show, and we just sat here and tripped balls well, all well, day then you, and talked about our theories uh, of life. Last <laughs> time you talked about Jesus riding a Harley. Imagine if, and I still believe he'd do it. Listen, I'm telling you, man, I'm sober. Think about that. But imagine if the trip kicks in right now. Yeah, we could imagine Jesus. I'm in. You ever want to just trip mushrooms and do this podcast? I'll come to you. Uh, you know, mushrooms. I think mushrooms will be legal before uh, before you know it. You know, I think. So too, they're legal, and I heard in Oregon you can walk into a dispensary, yeah, and buy psilocybin mushrooms. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to I me. I think that's about to be legal. I, we don't have to drink a whole lot of that one, so let's go ahead and let me. Let, we, that was just a little taste. No, no, I love a little. All I can do today is taste. I got shit. I got a big show. And, I know, I know, I know. I just, this this will be the for, last I've been, one. I've been, I've been, let me tell you how long I've been awake. I've not been awake long enough. I thought I've been awake forty six minutes. That's not bad. Better enough, the coffee's just kind of getting in. Oh, I didn't get but, a coffee yet. I did get a water though. But let's get let's go back to that flavor profile. You tasted the moonshine I brought for you. I did. Um, let's get give me an idea of what mood you're in. You feeling some chocolatey? You feeling some cinnamon? What are you feeling today? So some cinnamon action. You want some cinnamon kind of cinnamon action? Tum -tum. All right. Let's see here. Hmm. There'll be a little. Do you set your bar up the same way every time? Oh, I, I, you, you know or how do you, you just like memorize it the moment you set it up. This is, uh, it's chaos. It's pure chaos. Really? Yeah. And there's no rhyme or reason. And then, you know, my manager sitting right there will come in here and steal a bottle or two. Um, you know, uh, you know, I've got to, I got to think. Is he of a my, single man? Are you a he, single he is man? a single man. Oh yeah, I bet late night after the festival starts closing down, he's in here fucking. Boy, he's got the key to paradise over here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh this is a nice uh and this is a pour that you'll want to i love them little airplane looking bottles man listen this glass is yours to i keep. was taught as a young child to sneak these into sporting events mm -hmm. that was one of my things i did to carry my weight around the family this young man i'd sneak in the liquor you know what i'm saying true story this is the uh uh, Bert, Old Forester Birthday Bourbon from 2019. Uh, this is a, this would be what you would say an allocated bottle in the world of whiskey. Um, and so, it would, and it's a, You said I could have the bottle, right? You could, you okay. could keep that, keep that bottle. As I put it in my pocket, I was like, I don't think I'm stealing this. I no, sure well, I got, and I have something very special for you as okay. well. Hey. I have a special gift for you because I'm proud of you. Thank you, bro. But as, as we kind of like sip on this, I did want to, I did want to talk to you about like what was, what's it like being able to cross all genres, whether it's hip hop, rock, country, right now? Because no, not many people can say that they had hits in every genre that matters in the world right now. You know, it's been unbelievably well received, and I think the most important thing that's happened through this process for me was it made me realize how much everybody kind of listens to everything yeah so it's not as like the same 90 i always say 1997 i listen to tracy lawrence i listen to corn and i listen to snoop dogg right this is just three things that were big in my household you know they couldn't be more fucking different we go from paint me in birmingham to gin and juice to mm -hmm. adidas you know and then of course that's also the same year i seen snoop on tour with corn changed everything for me so putting music out that way to me is just doing what I've always listened to. Right. 
What'd you grow up listening to? Where was it at for you? Where was uh, it like, I was I was all how over the wild place. did your taste get musically? I was very heavy metal early on, and then I I got into the rodeo scene. I was like riding bulls and doing all the rodeo stuff, and I had a minute with strangling my my boys with wranglers and uh, and um, listening to country music. And then I got into uh, then I got into hip hop, and then at some point I was lis- listening to all of that stuff. But when I was like in Iraq, all I would listen to was like Five Finger Death Punch, Metallica, Iron Maiden, all that shit that would just keep the blood boiling. And then when I came home from Iraq, I kind of lost my my take my love for music. And that and in, in in like studying people who come through come out of PTSD and stuff, you learn this that you stop enjoying things that you used to love and music was one of those things that i had lost and and so like my my love for music in the last decade in a lot of ways has been like lost time so if there was a band that came out between 2005 and 2007 a lot of times i don't know much about them right because that was my my dead zone that was your yeah yeah did you ever go back and study those years when you fell back in love with music uh, I, I have a little bit, uh, and, and a good case in point is Foo Fighters. Yeah, uh, Foo Fighters is a band that you know, while they had been out, you know, it, that was the period that they really kind of like took off as the Transformer movies and stuff were right. kind of coming out. Um, you know, I kind of fell, you know, fell back in love or relearned Foo Fighters right. in the last like few years, uh, and they were kind of in, they fell in that dead zone for me. That's real. God, dude, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. First of all, to your point about coming home, have you ever heard of a program called Creative Vets? Yeah, yeah. Yo, it's genius, right? So their way of therapy for people with PTSD who have served in active duty is to bring them into Nashville and get them with songwriters and translate stories and pain into songs. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the dopest programs on earth. Yeah. It is so, so incredible, you know, especially like even a guy like you that kind of lost his love for music and was a music guy just to, hey, maybe you need to get in a room and, you know, figure that out in, yeah. a, in a musical setting. And I think that's just so cool what they do for vets. And we support the shit out of that organization. Yeah. You know, I need to do something with them. I do everything I can to, to help uh, where I can. And, uh, you know, the thing about it is, is like you're you're in a very similar situation, different you know, talking about like the, um, you know, being incarcerated, talking about all the different challenges that we have in life and to show like, we are not defined by whatever's happened to us. That's you, man, you're putting it out there. And, yes, I, lo- sir. and I love that about you. For always onward and upward, baby. Right on. Well, cheers to you. Cheers to you, my brother. Everything you've been doing. And uh, tell me, did you get a little cinnamon in that? Old Forester Birthday Bourbon. 2019. Yeah. You can taste Yeah. You know what I like about it the most is it doesn't feel as heavy as I expected an old forester to feel. Yeah. And that one's probably uh, the highest proof of everything you had on the table. Really? Because that yeah. first one you gave me, that triple mass was thick. Yeah. I mean, it was thick. But that right there, that's dope. You, yeah. Your palate's been warming up a little bit with it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So as I'm going to reach down here, tell us a little bit about what what you've got new cooking. What's what's new and going on? Is this my camera? Do I have a camera? Right That's there. My camera. camera right Hello, there. everybody. My name is Jelly Roll, and I got new music coming in November. I'm on tour with Shine Down right now. We're having a fucking blast. Then I'll be putting out more music in December. I closed my year of shows in Nashville. You should come down, see everybody. Absolutely. December 9th, Bridgestone Arena, headlining, sold out arena show in the hometown. Wow. It's going to be an absolute circus. You are more than welcome to come hang out, even set up the Fred Minnick get up, and uh, <laughs> it'd be dope. I, yeah, right. I'm <laughs> saying, I love this. This is bring this. But, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's my year, y'all. Get ready, baby. New music's on the way. And I got something special for you. It's a oh nine, my God. 10 year uh, bottle of Mictors, man. That's in celebration for everything that you have done, oh, and everything you sir. and everything that you mean to uh, to your community, and all those who are out there struggling to uh, to get through. Oh, thank you. So, for cheers this, to you, brother. Thank you, brother. Cheers. So proud of everything you've done. This is dope. Thank you, brother. I also have a T-shirt for you. Yes. 
I think it's over there in the corner. Andy, can you grab a pick? Me and Fred. I couldn't find any t-shirts in here, Fred. Yeah? None? Hmm. No, well. 